Welcome to my short presentation on post-tonal prolongation in the first movement of Stravinsky's Movements for Piano and Orchestra. You are listening to the first 30 seconds of a performance by Sviatoslav Richter and the Moscow Conservatory Orchestra. I think it's a good performance overall. Note the subtle reverb and intimate space. Some time ago, I created a graph of the piece, arguing for a form of post-tonal prolongation that I've been developing. In a moment, you will hear a remix of the previous recording, along with my graph. The rationale for my choices in the graph is explained in my paper, Some Principles of Post-Tonal Prolongation, which will be given at the Texas Society of Music Theory Conference, February 18th through 19th, 2011. What I've done here is this. Through the magic of digital editing, I've extracted from the recording the notes from the graph that I consider structural, using digital editing software and a lot of band pass filters. For the tertiary notes, I add 1.5 seconds of reverb. For the secondary notes, I add 2.5 seconds of reverb. For the primary notes, I add 4 seconds of reverb. To the notes that remain in the foreground, I do not add any reverb at all. This creates a ghost score of highlighted notes, reminiscent of Morton Sabotnik, which I then mix back in with the original recording. You are listening to the ghost score alone right now. My hope is that by doing so, I make a case that post-tonal prolongational analysis can help articulate important structural arrival points and harmonies and create performances that are more dynamic and less static. I'm using mixing as a surrogate for choices that could be made in performance practice. I believe the assumption that post-tonal music employs pitch structures that are always egalitarian at all times is ill-founded, and that performers should feel at liberty to use their own judgment and analytical skills to create dynamic and articulate, rather than safe and static, performances of post-tonal music. On with the show. Thank you. 